Two-way tables are ways to organize data so that you can kind of interpret potential outcomes, right? And there's more than one variable here. So not only do you have um, men and women, right? There's there's going to be a variable there, men and women. You also have sports and not sports. So you could have men who play sports, men who don't, women who play sports, women who don't. And so the tables look like this, and this is how they're organized. So the first thing you have to do when you're looking at these two-way tables is you're going to have to find these total values, and that's the, that's the start. So forget sports, no sports, all that. Just looking at sports alone here, how many men and women total are there that play sports? And you can quickly find that. You would just add these, so that's 38, right? And then similarly, you can add these down here. So 15 and 12 is 27. So all the men and women collectively that don't play sports comes to 27, right? What about just men, period? How many men are there? Forget sports, no sports, just total men. You could add a cross and you would quickly come up with 35. And same thing here with the women, 18 and 12, that would be 30. And what's interesting here is when you add these columns down, you would get, if you added all of the men and the women, you would get 65, which should absolutely equal the sum of these two as well, which it does. If you look at this, 38 plus 27 is definitely 65. So this is done. And the reason we do this is because we're going to be asked a series of questions like, you know, you know, random scenarios, and you have to come up with probabilities of that happening. And so we'll go over, you know, we'll come up with like five random examples that are typical questions uh, when you're looking at these two-way tables. And regardless of the question, I think the way to look at it, excuse me, to look at it is this. You have a fraction, which is your probability, and this is out of the total, and this is always going to be kind of your desired outcome out of the total possible, right? And so let's do, for example, uh, the first question might be something like this. If I pulled a random person, I'll just kind of take short notes here. If I pulled a random person, what are the odds that it's a male who doesn't like sports? I'll do a down arrow. Does not play sports, right? And so when you look at the denominator, again, that's out of the total sort of pile of people I can choose from. And the hint here is if you choose randomly, um, what do you get? How many random people total? That includes men, women, sports, no sports. The idea of a random person is every person in the whole pile. So that would be over 65. That's done. Now the question is how many males are there that don't play sports? Not this value. The males, the men that don't play sports are, there's 15 of them. And so the trick here is finding the denominator first, I think. That's kind of the available pool of people you're pulling from. And then the desired outcome. Males who play, don't play sports, there's 15. Random people, there's 65 random people. So that's scenario number one. So let me do a second scenario. And if you're faster than me, which you probably are, you can quickly try to find your probability before I even get there. So here's a second scenario. Right, so they might say something like this. Given that it's a female, right? So we'll write female or woman. Given it's a female, what's the probability that she does not play sports, right? So no sports. This one's tricky. The denominator is not 65. They, they tell us, they are very specific about the pool of people we're pulling from. Given that it's a female, how many? what's the probability that that person does not play sports? How many women are there total? There's 30. So our denominator, we're not pulling from the men category. They said specifically, we already know it's she's a woman, right? So 30. They didn't say out of all the people collectively, so 30. Now, how many don't play sports? Well, that's pretty easy. That's our 12 value. So this would be 12 out of 30. So I think you're starting to get the hang of it. So let's do another scenario, right? So what if they said if a random person is pulled... What is the uh, probability that it's a male? And now they didn't say sports or no sports or anything. Again, if it's a random person, the denominator, the total pool of possible people we're pulling from is 65. Now they just said, what's the probability that it's a male? That would include sports players and no sports players. So that would be 35. So all the men out of possible, that's the outcome for that one. All right, let's do another one. Number four, let's do another one. Okay, so maybe they'll say, uh, if I pulled a random person, you can probably already guess the denominator, what is the uh, what are the odds that it's a, a female, or a woman, so a woman, female, that does play sports, right? Same thing, you know that it's over 65 because we're choosing from the whole population, and how many women play sports? You're looking at 18, done.
Okay. I'll do one more. Um, I'll try to trick you, right? So let's do this one. Okay. So here's another scenario. What if I said, given I select a person that does not play sports, right? What is the probability that it is a woman? So we have woman here. Given that they don't play sports. So now this is weird. What is my denominator? Look over here at the no sports category. How many total do not play sports? That is 27. The available pool you're pulling from is 27. And how many of those are women? Come up here and that is 12. So two-way tables, the whole point to two-way tables is creating this table to organize your data to be able to make good predictions as to probabilities of outcomes. And obviously I did an example of men and women, sports and no sports. There's infinite scenarios where you could use a two-way table. And once you fill in these totals, you're unstoppable because um, you can find the probability of just about anything happening. You could find the probability um, if it's a random person that they, uh, I mean, again, countless scenarios, you know, random person that is a woman that plays sports and you can do this all day. So I think two-way tables are actually productive and, and pretty helpful and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video.